The mid delts can make a huge difference in the appearance of your physique from all angles. They help to add width to your frame and aid in bolstering the coveted V taper. A wide frame with a narrow waist is one of the most appealing features of any aesthetic physique. The mid delts also help add a sense of roundness to the shoulders that the front delts or rear delts can't make up for. All in all, if you're looking to build an aesthetic physique, you have to train the mid delts and train them with purpose. Before I get into the best exercises for training the mid delts, let's quickly touch on their anatomy, function, and the mistakes to avoid making once training them. The lateral head of the deltoid runs from the scapula and attaches in the gap between the biceps and triceps on the lateral aspect of the humerus. This positioning is what helps to give that round 3D feature to the delts. The mid delts only have one real job and that's to abduct the humerus, lifting your arms up to the side away from your body. So training them should be simple, right? The truth is, it is simple to train them. In fact, the mid delts are a small muscle group that respond very well to direct training, but only if you train them correctly. The biggest problem I see with people training their mid delts is lack of volume. You see, when it comes to building your mid delts, compound movements alone won't cut it. Although the mid delts are active during most pressing movements, their involvement is minimal. Research shows that the middle deltoid only exhibits up to 62% maximum voluntary contraction during dumbbell shoulder presses. Overall, EMG studies determine a lack of activation in the mid delts from most movements apart from movements which directly target abduction of the shoulder, which actually makes a lot of sense when we think about their function, shoulder abduction. There aren't many exercises that actually mimic this movement apart from some form of lateral raise. That being said, all lateral raises are not created equal. Most people just perform standard dumbbell lateral raises in hopes of getting their mid delts to pop. Unfortunately, these normally don't get the job done and there are three main reasons for this. Number one, there's a high involvement of the front delts who also act to abduct the shoulder. The further in front of the body the dumbbell is, the more involvement we get from the front delt. This is why it's imperative that we do our best to raise the dumbbell directly at our side. That said, even when we are raising the dumbbell directly at our sides, the front delt is still bearing a good deal of the load. Fortunately, there is a way to overcome this problem, which I'll get into in a second. Number two, the resistance profile. The difficulty with a dumbbell lateral raise is that it has a pretty poor resistance profile. There is little to no tension at the bottom of the rep and a lot of tension from roughly 30 to 90 degrees of abduction. This rough resistance profile means that the muscle is getting targeted mostly in its shortened range and not in its lengthened range. And lastly, this exercise often leads to heavy ego lifting which results in some weird exercise resembling half of a lateral raise and half of a shrug. The mid delts are not involved in any scapular elevation and so any elevation of the shoulder girdle means the load is shifting off of the mid delts and onto the traps. With that being said, there are three exercises I recommend fitting into your program to help blow up your mid delts. Number one, chest supported lateral raise. To avoid the mistakes of the standard lateral raise, lean forward slightly and externally rotate the shoulder. Not only will this put your shoulders in a safer position, but it'll also shift most of the load to the mid delts. For this exercise, the bench should be at a slight incline. Don't overdo it or you'll turn the exercise into more of a rear delt fly. The chest support not only adds a layer of stability, it also makes the exercise much more difficult to cheat, meaning you can produce more force where it matters. Another tip with this exercise is to not abduct the arm more than 90 degrees as once you do so, the front delt becomes more active again. I recommend raising the dumbbells until they're just below parallel to the floor, lifting them up at an angle slightly anterior to the body. Number two, Egyptian lateral raise. The Egyptian lateral raise accounts for one problem that the dumbbell version can't fix, the resistance profile. 
Because the mid delts are more involved during the end of the range of motion and less in the beginning, leaning away allows for better isolation of the mid delts. To perform this exercise, set the cable pulley at the bottom. Place the leg of the side you're training slightly in front of the other to allow the cable to pass through. This mitigates any chance of the cable hitting your body and also leads to a straighter line of force. Remember, what makes this exercise powerful is the ability to lean away, so make sure your legs are set close enough to the pulley to allow you to do so. And number three, wide grip upright row. Last but not least, we have the wide grip upright row. Known mostly for being a great exercise for the traps, the upright row is also a great exercise for targeting the mid delts due to the degree of shoulder abduction. The key is to only raise the bar and your elbows to 90 degrees or slightly below. The main reason why this could be a game changer is due to the ease at which you can load the exercise while keeping most of the tension on the mid delts. Research has shown that the wider you go, the more focus moves off of the biceps and onto the mid delts. When it comes to grip width, going too narrow will result in excessive internal rotation and may lead to shoulder impingement. Apart from that, the level of abduction doesn't change at all with a narrower grip, just the level of shoulder elevation. Essentially, you'd just be increasing demands on the traps, involving the biceps a bit more, and also placing your shoulder in an injury-prone position. Not good. Instead, aim to go a bit wider. I recommend going at a width that allows you to have close to 90 degrees of elbow flexion at the top of the rep. Not only will you be able to load this position more heavily, the biomechanics mean that it targets the mid delts more. Go any wider than this and you'll begin to shift the tension onto the rear delts instead. Whether you're following some sort of push-pull workout, an upper-lower routine, or a traditional bro split, these exercises can be easily fit into your program. To summarize, the mid delts add a sense of width to any physique and are best trained with isolation exercises or movements that involve shoulder abduction. To maximize growth, train your mid delts two or three times per week and don't be afraid to start your training sessions off with exercises that target the mid delts if they're really a priority. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Is there a muscle group you're struggling to build? Let me know in the comments section below and I'll make a video like this one. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.